Hello, and welcome to a special episode of Beyond the Trailer, where I'm joined by screenwriter John J. McLaughlin, who has written Black Swan, Hitchcock, Parker, and you're working on a Johnny Carson biography. Uh, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, so we're going to talk about kind of your body of work, but yeah. I want to start off with a fun question, all right? What okay. are you writing? What did you write today? What are you working on? Oh, um, I was actually working on a pitch for uh, a movie about the Denver International Airport. Really? What, anything yes. Can you tell us like, what about the airport? No, because I won't, <laughs> I won't get the job. Okay. But even if I don't get the job, it's a spooky airport that's had problems, Ooh. people dying, and, and there's all sorts In of real conspiracy life, theories about it. Yeah. Ah, yeah. that's fascinating. Oh. Um, and if you, if you go and look up the Denver International Airport, you can see all these weird murals that they have. And, um, so someone is making a spooky movie about that, and they asked me to come up with a pitch for them. That's really cool. So that's, that leads great into the first question. You know, a lot of people can go and buy a screenwriting program and sit and write a screenplay. But you've managed to turn it into your actual job. Right. So <laughs> how, how does one do that? <laughs> well, for you at least. I know everyone's path is different. Um, it, I mean, it helps if you're incredibly wealthy and connected. That would be the, my first advice to okay. anyone trying to, All right. to have a career in show business. Uh, barring that, as a, a writer, you have to you have to write and you have to get a job to support yourself at the mm -hmm. same time, uh, which I did for many years, and and then I started working for Bob Balaban, mm -hmm. uh, who directs movies and is an actor, uh, and I worked for him for a few years writing stuff for him, and then I ended up with a, a manager through him. Um, Joel Goldstein, and then he got me my first agent who, well, not really my first agent. I had had several agents, and they were all busts. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want another agent, so to impress me, she sold a script for a lot of money. And then once <laughs> you sell something it. for a lot of money, <laughs> then you work forever. Oh, really? Oh, great. So you find it easier yeah. to people approach you. It's easier oh, yeah. for you to pitch your own projects. Just So it's that thing I think that a lot of us kind of see when we watch. If you just make that one thing, you get yeah. one thing, you're good to go. Yeah, you got to break through the wall, but mm -hmm. it's can take a number of years, or it can happen, you know, in a second. I've known people who won contests. I've known people who have gone in all sorts of different ways. How did you keep yourself from being like, forget it. This is ridiculous. What was I thinking? Uh, you mean today or <laughs> all, all long So that question will last forever, huh? It's <laughs> you, like, I know, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, um, at the beginning, when you had not broken through yet, what made you decide to just be like, you know what, maybe it's not going to happen for me? Well, for me, it was fun, and it wouldn't matter if I made money because I, I had other jobs to support myself. So while you were doing the bulk of your even your professional writing, mm -hmm. you had another job? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. At what point were you able to give that up and just write full time? Uh, I started r working for Bob in like 91 and mm -hmm. then I sold my big thing in 96. So I, I worked for Bob for not that much money. Uh, for like five years. So uh, the film Hitchcock that you wrote got a lot of attention during award season uh, and it's interesting because a lot of people on this channel, I love Hitchcock, we all think he's a fantastic filmmaker, but a very unique filmmaker and you captured his voice really well but you're you're portraying these private conversations that took place, you know, that nobody else could have possibly heard and you don't have anybody to really fact check you. So how do you how do you write something like that and also even for the Johnny Carson film that you're working on now? Uh, well. I don't write historical documents. I write movies. So <laughs> thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> um, w you know, you know the essence of what anyone says to anyone, and you can, you can make it what you want. I mean, I don't like uh, biographies that just take things from letters or they take things from you know, quotes. You know, little quotes all gathered together. Mm -hmm. But we did have, on Hitchcock, we had Stephen Rebello, who knew Hitchcock, who worked for 10 years writing his book about the making of Psycho, and who knew every, every single detail about Hitchcock. So if ever I had a question, you know, hey, uh, in, in Hitchcock's kitchen, was there a blender? Oh, yeah, there were actually two. You know, I could call him and he'd tell me. Really? So wow. as far as, like... Um, you know, knowing his stuff, Stephen Rebello knew everything. And right now I have the same thing with Carson, because I have a writer 
Bill Zemi, who's writing a book about him, and he knows. Well, let's take a scene for an example, right? So let's say you have like a conversation where that, that fight, that famous fight in the Hitchcock film between Alma and Alfred Hitchcock about you know credit and her being whether or not she's happy for right. him. So as a writer, so you decide you want to have that scene. How do you approach it? How do you decide who's going to start it? Because it, you know you're, it's not a historical document. Uh, no, but it's like any any piece of drama. It's any piece of drama. You know where they start and you know where they end. And, you know, according to Rebello, they did have a lot of tension on the movie between them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you use your imagination and you, <laughs> you, and you draw on, you know, your own life because you're a human being too, mm -hmm. we, we hope. And, you know, you, you imagine what that conversation would be because I work, I have a wife. You know, I know what she goes through, and you know, when Wait. she sees the movie, she goes like that to <laughs> so me. That's, that's so, the stamp of approval. Uh, you know, that's great. As an artist, you're always writing about yourself, mm -hmm. even if you're writing about someone else who was a real person, or if you're writing about another character. You're always examining your own personality, uh, your own fears, your own troubling psychological. Problems. Well, I thought you did a very nice so. job capturing Alma's voice, uh, but you know, and also her her complaints. But you know, also, so you've written Hitchcock, you know, Black Swan, uh, really uh, co-wrote, co-wrote really. as the writer in the middle. Yeah. Oh, excellent. How's that work? So. Uh, how's it work? Yeah. Well, how, well, you know, you have you get a script, and so they're like, you're like the script doctor. Is that what happens? You come in? No, it's um, Darren. Darren had the script, and he called me, and he said. You know, I want to make this movie because it, it took place in the theater and he wanted to make it about ballet. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to heighten uh, the genre elements and, and things like that. So so then you, you work with him for a few years and then he goes off and does something else and I go off and do something else. And then he goes to the, the next person to, you know, finish it off. Well, that's two questions, really. So the first thing is when you have to hand, it, when you have to hand something over to another writer, how, how do you do that? How, how do you, because it's hard, you know, for artistic people like yourself to be like, okay, I'm going to share this. Uh, you don't ever, the writers are all kept in separate cages and they never, <laughs> ever, ever see each other. Oh, or, really? And they're never even allowed to talk to each other or know who the other writers are, basically. Wow. So and it, it's, does it's that funny because it in Black Swan, it's like the, the guy, um, Andres, who, who wrote the uh, original script, he called me. It was the first time I talked to him and he had written it. 10 years before, and it was like, and then you share information, well, what did he say, what, what was this, what was that? Um, and writers are, are nice guys, but it's like, it, it's, it's kind of like we're those uh, fish that all have to be kept in separate tanks, mm -hmm. because, you know, our job is to attack the other person's work and, and make it into our own. <laughs> but so. it's not personal, yeah. Yeah, course, it's not right? personal, it's we're just fish that eat each other, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you said something interesting to me beforehand about your time, the breakup of your time. Right, so it takes like years for you to work on a screenplay. So, what, and also you say you're pursuing future jobs at the same time. Right. So, how many things are you working on right now, in total? Uh, I am, I'm working on about ten things. That's interesting. Okay. And they're all different stages, obviously. And right? uh, <laughs> yeah, a number of people don't know that I'm working on anything else except for theirs. So, <laughs> but hopefully they won't. They won't. Watch they have your to be in cages broadcast. too. Yes, right? well, they are. Well, it's like, remember when you were in high school and your, your history teacher would give you a paper to write and you'd say, but, you know, I have all this English homework. It's like they didn't want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. Everyone has separate projects. Did you know you were writing for Jason Statham when you wrote Parker? Uh, no, I was, I was not when I wrote That's Parker originally. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we did a couple of things to make it for him, but... Um, yeah, Jason's great. Can you tell Jason's us what great. you did to make it for him? Uh, a little? Uh, Does he like, I need more kicking? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, he, no. He, you know, we have to explain why, <laughs> why he's British, <laughs> I think. And maybe it's still in the movie, or maybe it's not. I mean, it's all a matter of, you know, look, I know when he was cast in the movie, a lot of people who are big Parker fans mm -hmm. were like, hey, he's not, he doesn't look anything like Parker. John Hamm should be Parker. And it's a, <laughs> it'd be great if John Hamm was Parker, but the world of movie stars, it's a very small 
world. Mm -hmm. And different movie stars bring a different amount of money uh, from foreign sources. And some that you would want, they don't bring enough. Yeah. And some, you know, bring plenty. And Jason loved the project, and uh, he brought the financing with him, and uh, there you go. It's that rule you had about having all that money. <laughs> having money is good. Well, no, he didn't pay out of his well, pocket. Well, I know, but, but people, still, he put it together. You know, because so. most, mo the way most independent movies work mm -hmm. nowadays is a producer will have a property, either a book or, you know, whatever that property is. They'll get a writer, and mm -hmm. they'll get the writer to write the script. And the script attracts the director, and the director attracts the stars, and the stars attract the money, and the money gets the movie made. Ah, and that's, that's the line. That's great. And that's why, you know, people are always asking, well, why is it everything based on a book? And it really protects those uh, producers in the beginning who eventually will have to be swallowed up by big, giant studio producers mm -hmm. at the end. Uh, because if they can own the underlying material, then they can be around without getting kicked oh. off the carousel. Oh, that's great. So that's it's like systems of checks and balances protecting yourself. Uh, yeah, you want right. to be the last person fired if you can. That's important. <laughs> So let me ask you this. Uh, there was a funny joke in a recent 30 Rock episode <laughs> where they, <laughs> surprise, no, of course there was, and um, they, had, they, had, they had a poster for a future Transformers movie, and it said, written uh -huh. by no one. Uh -huh. All right, so as special effects become bigger and bigger and to some, de to some degree distract the audience, how do you think that affects screenwriting and the importance of the script? Well, uh, different, I, I mean, most big studio movies that you see are going to have like eight, nine, ten writers wow. who aren't credited doing mm -hmm. it. So it's, it's never, there are effects, but someone has to write the effects. Someone has to say what's, what's happening. Um, and what it is, why it seems like there's no writer is because you've gone through nine, ten, twelve, twelve uh, writers. But it's always, in Hollywood, it's always the director and their, and what they want. So oh, you so cycle you should, People should blame that guy. You should blame <laughs> the directors, and you should credit the directors, too, when you like the movie. Exactly, yeah. And the writer, oh. you know what the writer did? He got, he got the project moving forward. Well, yeah, exactly what you said with that, you know, you have those steps, the, you, the writer is second, All right? Because right? Hitchcock, it went to Sasha. Sasha rewrote, probably did 17 rewrites wow. of the script himself, mm -hmm. and he didn't get credit. Uh, but... It's, you know, the director is the one who's putting the product up there. Cool. And let, let me ask you this. Two, two last questions, all right? More about, like, the craft and advice for people who are watching, okay? Okay. First of all, um, I talk a lot of business on this show and practicality, mm -hmm. like things that you're talking about here, which I think is great. Uh, what's some advice you would give to someone who's starting out, who's a screenwriter and might be uh, not aware of some, maybe some of the harsh realities or, you know, maybe the happy reality, you know, the, the very real things that they're going to bump into? Uh, I, I think if you, you need to enjoy writing, because for a lot of people, writing is a horrible chore. And if you don't enjoy it, you know, forget it, because that's the most enjoyable part. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I, I tell people is you have to finish what you're working on. You can't get a quarter of the way through and say, okay, now I'm going to rewrite what I did because I'm not really happy. You've got to go right to the end. Okay. Because uh, you really only learn by doing it. We all know how a mo movie works. We all have seen movies mm -hmm. and we know what happens. So the practice that you need is writing a whole movie because things are going to happen at the end uh, that are going to affect the beginning of the movie. Oh, that's great. So you don't want to rewrite the beginning of the movie ten times like people do, and, mm. and two years later they're on page 30 still. Uh, you want to go all the way through and then go to the next thing. And you want to have also ideas ready for other movies, different types of movies in, in both size and scope, uh, and by so size, that you're talking about budget and everything, right? In, yeah. in budget, mm -hmm. you know, a personal movie, a big budget movie, because if you ever have someone who reads a script and they like it, they're probably not going to buy it. But they might say, wow, I really like the writing. What else do you have? Interesting. Okay. And if you have something that's similar to something that they already own, that they're not satisfied with, 
even in just an idea form. They say, you know, I have a movie like that. I didn't know you were interested in marionettes. You know, why don't, why don't I show you the script and you tell me, you know, what how you, you did to it. How you tweak it, right? And that's how you get a job. So I think that's, so that also speaks to the idea of, you know, you shouldn't be like, oh, I'm only going to, I want to sell this, this script. Your goal should be, I want to be a screenwriter. Uh, right? Yeah, that sounds you, good. Okay. That sounds smart. <laughs> All right, all right, and my last question for you is uh, a little bit about what you were just saying about make sure you finish it. Uh, it's hard to write, you know, you're, it's just you, you have your own deadlines. How do you set up your, how do you motivate yourself? How do you make sure it gets done and it, you don't just have it languish? Uh, how do I personally or how do, do the, you? Uh, yourself, people? yeah. I mean, uh, I guess it's different for everybody, I would imagine, but. I do it, they, they have a system where they will not send you the check until you send in the <laughs> script. And it works very well for me. It makes okay. me finish things right on time, mm. right away. Uh, but, you know, it's got to be something that you enjoy doing. If, you know, if I wasn't working for money, it would be, hopefully I would be working on something that you get up in the morning and you say, oh, I got, I got to oh, do more great. of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always good to write first thing in the morning before your head gets cluttered with a lot of stuff. So if you can wake up in the morning and you say, I want to work on that script some more, uh, or that short story, or whatever you're writing, it's, you're on a good path.